Hey guys, this is Dr. JT, general medicine resident and a part-time YouTuber and I welcome you to my channel, Dr. JTM. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then go subscribe it and also click the bell icon because in today's video about the career guidance, we are going to discuss about the branch of vision and the branch that we need to look for, that is ophthalmology. And we have a very special guest to talk about this branch of ophthalmology. He'll be talking about the pros and cons of taking ophthalmology and what is the scope of this surgical branch in this modern era and lot more professional questions to come and we also have a fun round to know some fun facts about this ophthalmologist so don't miss watch till the end and with no delay let's meet our guest and start the career guidance to ophthalmology ophthalmology it's a visionary branch which always fascinated me from the beginning i started my journey of becoming a doctor when i was 18 i did my mbbs in pisims vijayawada this Pinam Nini Siddhartha Medical Institute and uh, I completed my post-graduation in MS Ophthalmology in Sri Ramchandra Medical College, Chennai and I completed my fellowship in Competency of Ophthalmology at Dr. Agarwal Sai Hospital, Chennai and I call myself Dr. Gautam. Hi sir, welcome to my channel Dr. JTM and I am really happy to have you in my channel particularly to the kind of video that we are doing today that is career guidance and particularly your branch of ophthalmology. So I have a lot of questions to ask you from why this branch to how this branch would be for PG aspirants. I think you are ready to answer all those questions. Hi, thanks for having me here. My pleasure to be in this program and I'm ready to guide the students. Yes sir. So before I tell you uh, about this uh, interview, I have three segments in this interview, particularly the first segment about the importance of this branch of ophthalmology. And second segment is about how this branch will be when the PGI students enter into this branch of ophthalmology. And third segment is obviously many of them know that is fun segment where I have a lot of teasing questions for you and for your ophthalmologists. Shall we start sir? Sure. Yes. So the first segment, the importance of ophthalmology branch. So sir, the first question, why ophthalmology? What essence did you really find in this ophthalmology? See, uh, ophthalmology as a branch is very uh, important. See, eye as an organ. So, eye is very important for day-to-day -day life. So, having good vision is very important. Okay, so that's a great point. So, even though, even if they want to see this video, they need the, those eyes. So, that is the value of eye. So, but what exactly made you to take this ophthalmology? Is it your first choice or is it your second choice or three choices? Like you have uh, three different branches or you have just taken it because you don't have any option. No, I had three choices. I was, I'm a more surgical person. So I wanted to do something in surgery. So Ophthal and Ortho were my first choice mm -hmm. and uh, Urology was my second choice. Okay. But uh, I didn't want any branch uh, which deals with emergencies more. So Ophthal deals with less emergencies. Mm -hmm. So, and microsurgery is one exciting uh, part of ophthalmology. So that led me to take. So tell us, uh, according to you, where exactly this ophthalmology stands in the world and also in India? Uh, not like that. See, ophthalmology as a branch, it, it deals with three types, medical, uh, uh, procedural and uh, surgical. If you take an ophthalmology uh, branch, so you can go into a medical side also. You can join any corporate hospital or any medical college. You can see OP practice. You can guide patient to different specialties and uh, so on. But if you want to go further ahead, you can do procedural. Procedural means in medical retina, you deal with lasers and injections. So that is also a good option for a person who takes ophthalmology to go into a subspecialty. And if you want to do a surgical, altogether it is a very exciting branch. Okay, that means uh, to uh, what extent you say uh, that ophthalmology in other part of the world has developed and ophthalmology in India has developed in like in recent 10 years or so. So abroad is obviously uh, technology wise, it is far more advanced from India, but we are also getting all the technologies right now. But thing is cost effectiveness, uh, the equipment itself is very costly. Okay. So for us to invest in the equipment and get the returns back, it is a little longer period which will be there but as such there are a lot of uh, advancement coming to India now. Wow. So it's not like there is a big difference, uh, there is only small bit of difference like in maybe in two to three years we can expect all the development in ophthalmology sure. in India too. Sure. Yes. Sir, so with that question as I move on to the next question 
like as you said there is no much big difference in other part of the world and india so tell us uh, us mle part and plat part regarding ophthalmology and uh, taking uh, pg ophthalmology in india see for us indians going to uh, us and doing us mle and all it is little uh, competitive there so branches like dermatology and ophthalmology radiology these are not so easily obtained there there will be lot of uh, competition there as per ophthalmology branch is concerned but if you uh, crack it it is a very good branch there okay that's that that's a really good point so if you really want to take all usmle and do this ophthalmology branch then this point should be noted and with that i'll be moving on to the next question sir tell the students the pg aspirants what uh, is the importance of ophthalmology why do they need to take ophthalmology in this pg see importance means uh, main thing is you will be giving vision to people Uh, you'll be giving hope to people once you start doing an ophthalmology practice you'll have work satisfaction and you'll have uh, uh, professionally and personally also you'll have a lot of satisfaction when you see people uh, thanking you for giving them vision so that is one thing where you'll score high okay so that's that's really great point sir so with that question there opens uh, another uh, question that is tell us the top 5 government colleges in india so the top 5 government colleges uh, are aims uh, delhi afmc armed forces medical college pune then madras medical college then jipmer and then comes osmania medical college also very good college that's the five colleges for government but what about this private and deemed universities so according to you what are the top universities top universities mainly uh, sri ramchandra medical university is a very good thing where i uh, done my pg then cmc velur is a very good college okay then comes kasturpa medical college uh, manipal and mangalore both are very good okay so those will be the uh, top five government and also some top universities in private and team uh, for ophthalmology with that we have ended the first segment so well and we'll be entering into the second segment which is completely about how the life of a pg will be when they enter into ophthalmology branch so let's start it okay the second segment life of a pg in ophthalmology branch sir so the first question is uh how can we expect the workload in this ophthalmology branch tell us about uh the comparing both private and also government colleges uh, regarding this workload see uh, private there is no differentiation between private and government college i think work workload will be equal in both because there will be lot of camps so we as pgs we learn in camps only on camp patients we can't directly go and do private patients so on camp patients there will be work similar to kind of workload in government and private colleges but where i i work so it had a very uh, pretty good uh, number of patients there every two pgs will be posted for uh, one camp so they'll be they'll be uh, responsible for the uh, all the testing done for those patients who they got workload will be hectic but it is not so bad so that means it's it's the same like in the government or private all the module will have the same workload same. that's the point right yeah. sir so uh, what should be the approach of these pg students like when they enter into this ophthalmology branch uh, how should they start looking into things for learning the subject see main thing is you have to respect your seniors okay because initially people will be a little tough to understand but thing is once you get used to your seniors you will learn a lot from your seniors and uh, once you start uh, initially you will be blank so you should start learning from your uh, chief or mentor who will be as- allotted to you they will be giving you work don't say no to anything don't think don't push on the work to anybody uh, even if it goes wrong you do it you will learn from your mistakes see lot of op op if you see more cases you will have more experience so if you start seeing cases more people also will be like this guy this guy is working so we will give him more chances in surgeries and all okay so you will have that edge over the other people so once you start working more you will learn more so that's uh, that's a point but how can these pg uh, pgs really balance between getting exposed uh, clinically and uh, studying these books and theoretical part uh, first thing they'll be giving you uh, suturing you have to learn suturing before you start doing the surgery you will usually you'll be given uh, enucleated eyes from a donated patient so you can learn on them but if you are not uh, having access to the, those many eyes so you can learn on goat size also you can uh, learn suturing on them uh, once you practice on goat size it is much easier to do on a human so this is for the pgs already who is doing ophthalmology that tips you have given but what about the what about the people who are uh, entering the pressures so what is what is the advice that you are going to give these pressures see only studying will not get you anywhere 
okay you should study at the same time you should be involved in uh, practical knowledge also okay. you should know how uh, all the procedures getting done initially once you go start seeing op you won't get everything by uh, in the first two itself so once you start practicing it by the end of uh, pg life will be the three years of pg life okay so that is the point for freshers uh, that you are going to say who is going to take ophthalmology right yeah. so uh, with that point sir uh, tell us the stress levels that an uh, ophthalmology pg experiences here because mental health being really very important factor for pgs and doctors in this particular era mm-hmm. so what do you say about it the mental health uh, there won't be much but uh, if you are good with your seniors you won't have any difficulties okay but uh, if you are not or if you are little uh, tough with your seniors in the initial stages they'll give you a tough time okay. that is the only stress levels where you will uh, uh, have so so the next question will be about the work life the family and the personal life how do uh, ophthalmology pgs have to balance see uh, there won't be much of uh, work in the evenings once you are done with your work in the hospital just giving a revise of what you have learned in the morning will help you in the long run so uh, what is the future of a person who is taking this ophthalmology branch is there uh, like there are a lot of uh, uh, competition outside but after completing this ophthalmology residence uh, many think this might be the end branch but is that it or is there anything beyond it no no i was also told that ophthalmology is a end branch but it is not mm-hmm. so you need to do a fellowship post ophthalmology yeah, whatever ms if you do ms it is good if you do a do or a dmb also it's a good but thing is you need to do a fellowship if you do a dmb and do you need to do a phd later but if you're working in a corporate hospital do and dmb will be good but the pay scale will be little le- lesser than the ms so that means there, wo- there won't be real really an end to this ophthalmology no. getting saturated no. there's always new things coming up and people have to learn that's great so sir uh, with that point uh, let us move on to the next question mm. uh, what are the other options these uh, pgs will have when they complete their ophthalmology residency and they go like they have to put up a clinical setup or uh, they have to go and work in a uh, something like a corporate system or they have any fellowships to do in other countries or other places you definitely have to do a fellowship and that depends on what branch what specialty you like when you do a pg that mainly depends on uh, how you uh, like a specialty like as in cornea on your refractive surgery is a very good branch where you deal with corneal infections also and uh, refractive side you will be dealing with uh, refractive errors and uh, you will have keratoconus other uh, degenerative uh, disorders of the eye that's it so that means are you saying having a fellowship in ophthalmology is mandatory definitely okay so nowadays due to this change in time ophthalmology needs a fellowship You Thank definitely you. need a fellowship for you to increase your pay scale. You definitely need a fellowship. Okay, so to explore more, we need to have a fellowship, and yeah. then only we can. And uh, moreover, if you do an MS, only MS, you won't be fully trained in everything. Once you come out of the uh, PG life, it is not that you'll be hundred percent trained in everything. You have to do a fellowship in whichever branch you want, whichever thing you like. So to increase your pay scale and to uh, have a setup. you can say you are a glaucoma specialist so i am a glaucoma glaucoma specialist so i'll be uh, dealing with glaucoma so people require specialties now okay. there is not like an ms can see ms can see a comprehensive ophthalmology will see all the all the uh, specialties but the thing is if you do a glaucoma you will be 100% in that uh, specialty yes so you will be uh, dealing with all the surgery surgical and medical uh, uh, treatments of that branch so of just of the more the ms is not an end you at least try to do one of one fellowship that's what sir is trying to say so with that we have ended our second segment about how the life of a pg if they go into ophthalmology branch so i think you have got a lot of clarity and lot of things uh, you have to take down all those points on a paper and decide for yourself whether to go into ophthalmology which is really a visionary branch so the next segment will be the fun segment where i'll be asking a lot of teasing questions to these ophthalmologists but and uh, without any delay let's start that segment also so we have completed two rounds which consists of all the professional questions but this third round has all the fun questions where we will be knowing lot of fun facts regarding these ophthalmologists 
but this round i and sir won't be doing this this round will be done by sir and sir's best half so with no delay let's invite her uh hi uh this is my better half dr poojita she's a dermatologist so let's start the fun round interns uh, there will be less work for them so more of a fun time for them in last month department uh, family and friends ob- obviously everyone will have eye problems so i think there is good case so it depends on the uh, degree what you do if you do a ms of the mology so it will be somewhere around 80 to 90000 initially once you come out directly but if you do a do or dnb it will be around 60 to 70k and uh, once you do a fellowship it will be more than 1 lakh depending on how uh, uh, good you are at your fellowship see should we married before the pg or after the pg i don't think should be getting married at the time of doing a pg now because he should focus on what he is doing for the 3 years for me i think it's dermatology usually any branch will suit because you can either uh, do a full time uh, job or you can do a part time job as an ophthalmologist so i think any branch will be suitable for uh, ophthalmologist every branch is friendly the only advantage with ophthalmology is uh, you will be doing your own work you don't require a radiologist to do a b scan or an a scan or uh, you don't require an anesthetist to give a block so you can do that on your own uh, but only few cases you will be requiring help from other departments and uh, usually they are friendly in just in a fun note uh, gynec department they usually call us in the nights when the to see for toxemia and pregnancy uh, if patient has high uh, blood pressure so even 130 by 90 is very uh, high for them so they'll wake us up in the night multiple times for that so maybe that gynec department will be so that ends the third round hope you all enjoyed this session and also this video and uh, you have got a lot of fun facts and also a lot of professional questions answered so that's all about today's video and i got i think a lot of your doubts have clarified regarding this ophthalmology branch whether to opt for uh, government colleges or private colleges and how the life will be in ophthalmology and what is the future and i personally thank dr gautam sir for giving me this opportunity to uh, make such kind of video and giving such valuable uh, valuable tips to all of you and i hope sir will have all the health and prosperity in uh, in sir's future sir any words for our subscribers i thank uh, dr jtm for giving me this opportunity to be of some help and uh, this is a good initiative what he has taken up please do follow uh, and subscribe for his channel for more updates and more content Thank you sir thank you so much and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel dr jkm and i'll be back with another career guidance video until then bye take care and don't miss the bloopers that i'm going to attach at the end of the video uh, okay sir and then you just just right now feeling a teaser sir come on sir మళ్ళీ